Hello everyone, I'm Arunima from Knit and Otter and this video is a support video for the Ara Blanket Collection. Uh, the Ara Blanket Collection is a collection of five blankets that are worked in the round and uh, each of these blankets is made with a repeating pattern so that means that you can use the pattern to increase the size of your blankets as needed. And in this video, I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know to be able to make these blankets. So uh, we're going to go over the stitches that you need to know. Uh, there is a practice swatch that you can make uh, for just the stitches so that you're used to the stitches before you get to actually working in the round. And then the second part is where we will actually make a swatch from a chart. So you'll, uh, I'll show you how to read the chart and uh, how to make a swatch from them. If you're able to make that swatch you will be able to make your blankets as well because everything that you need to know to make the blankets is um, you will be using all of that to make that small swatch and so let me just uh, begin by showing you uh, what hook you will need to make these blankets because these blankets are worked in the round you need a double-ended hook to make them so you can have a hook like this which is a double-ended hook which is a fixed size hook which has a hook on both ends and you will need something like this or you could build a hook on your own by joining two hooks of an interchangeable hook set with a cord so this also functions exactly the same way the length of this cord does not really matter uh, because you can you can actually make the blankets with this hook uh, as well but uh, i like to use the interchangeable hooks because i can pick the hook size uh, so I can I can make use two different hook sizes uh, for the two passes so for my forward pass I used a eight millimeters hook and uh, which is a L11 hook and for my return pass I used a 6.5 millimeters hook which is a K10 hook so uh, I, I've made all of my blankets with this hook combination, but there's uh, you don't really have to you could use a hook like this and that's completely fine. But if you do use two hooks of slightly different sizes, I recommend using the smaller hook for your return pass and the larger hook for your forward pass. Uh, so let's quickly jump into the tutorial and uh, I hope you will have fun making your blankets. I'm going to start with showing you the stitches that you need to know before you um, follow along and make the swatch that I'm going to show you later in this presentation. So there are a total of six stitches of which two are the ones uh, that are used to actually create the design which are the knit and reverse stitches. Uh, the rest of the stitches are mainly for making the shape of uh, the, the square shape and for making the corners. So to be able to make the swatch you need to uh, I strongly recommend practicing these stitches in isolation because the technique, the in the round technique itself can be uh, can be a little difficult in the beginning. But if you know the stitches, it makes the process a lot easier than having to learn the stitches and the technique together. So the first stitch that you need to know is a Tunisian simple stitch. So this is a swatch of Tunisian simple stitches. That's what they look like. And here you have to first isolate the front vertical bar of the stitch in the previous row and pick that up yarn over pull through so that's a Tunisian simple stitch we'll make it again so insert your hook in the front vertical bar yarn over pull through the next stitch that you need to know is the Tunisian knit stitch and to make a Tunisian knit stitch you need to isolate the front vertical bar and the back vertical bar of the of the stitch and then insert your hook from front to back in the space here. So here that's the front vertical bar, back vertical bar, insert your hook front to back yarn over pull through. So for this one front vertical bar, that's the back vertical bar, insert your hook yarn over pull through. So that's knit stitches. Uh, the next stitch that you need to know is a Tunisian reverse stitch. So for that you need to isolate this back vertical bar and pick it up from behind the project. So you can turn your project, find that back vertical bar and then yarn over, pull through. You can also do this by inserting your hook like this, 
finding this back vertical bar, insert your hook here, isolate that, and yarn over, pull through. So that's reverse stitches. The next stitch that you need to know is a Tunisian full stitch. And a Tunisian full stitch is made in between two stitches. So here is the current stitch, the one that we just worked into. This one is the next one. And there is this space in between them. That's where you work a Tunisian full stitch. So insert your hook front to back, yarn over, pull through. Same for here. This is the current stitch. This is the next one. So you insert your hook in the space in between, yarn over, pull through. So that's a Tunisian full stitch. Now this next stitch is a twisted Tunisian simple stitch. And this is the one that uh, I've seen most people struggle with. So this is the one that I'd like you to practice a bit more than the others. So a Tunisian simple stitch is where we isolate this front vertical bar, insert our hook, and then yarn over, pull through. But you're doing the same thing, but from the opposite direction. So you're going to insert your hook from here and then yarn over pull through so here i am i pick up this front vertical bar and i twist up yarn over pull through so that's a twisted tunisian simple stitch so what a lot of people end up doing is that they pick up this back vertical uh, front vertical bar and they twist down and yarn over pull through and you see how different this stitch is from this one and that's something that we don't want. So no twisting down. So you pick up this front vertical bar and twist up and then yarn over, pull through. So the last stitch that you need to know is a twisted Tunisian knit stitch. And that is also like a, a knit stitch where you insert your hook between the front and back vertical bars, but in the opposite direction. So you have to move this front vertical bar to the other side and then find the space between the front and back vertical bars and insert your hook there. So move this, insert hook from front to back, yarn over, pull through. Same here, move this to the other side, insert hook front to back, yarn over, pull through. So that's those are the six stitches you need to know. That's simple stitches, knit stitches, reverse stitches, uh, full stitches, twisted Tunisian simple stitches, and twisted Tunisian knit stitches. Here is a sample chart that uh, is for a Tunisian in the round project that will build a square. So every row in this chart represents one round. What you're seeing here is, is only a quarter of the entire square. So every line in this chart will have to have to be made a total of four times to actually make the square. The numbers you see at the outside edges of each row, they are the round numbers. Um, and now let's look at the symbols that are in uh, this chart. So the first one is AMR, which is which indicates that you need to make one stitch in the magic ring. K represents a Tunisian knit stitch. R represents a Tunisian reverse stitch. F represents a Tunisian full stitch. And the C2, uh, the two C2s, it's a combination stitch. So that's an increase. That is a twisted Tunisian simple stitch and a twisted Tunisian knit stitch in the same stitch. So that builds your corner and provides the necessary increase for making the square shape. And on the other side, there is a C1 combination, which is a Tunisian knit stitch and a Tunisian simple stitch in the same stitch. And uh, you look at the last round, which is indicated as BOR, that's the bind off round. And when you are making that round, you're making the stitch and then you uh, make a slip stitch, which will make sure that you are not adding any more loops to your hook. You're just binding off and completing your uh, project. So that's all that you need to know uh, when you're reading a chart for a project that has worked flat in the round, center out, and this will create a square. I'm going to start with the magic ring. So I hold my yarn like this, pick this up here, and then make a chain. So that's 
That's my magic ring right there. And I'm going to, so this counts as the first stitch in the magic ring and I'm going to make seven more. So that's one, two, three, and eight. So eight stitches in the magic ring. And now I'm going to move these stitches to the return pass hook and then start casting off. So I'm going to move these to the other hook. I'm using a long cord just for the purpose of this tutorial, but you can work this uh, square in the round with uh, any double-ended hook. It does not have to have a long cord in between. You can even use a hook uh, like this that we talked about earlier and it will work. So here I am at my return pass and I'm going to now take my return pass yarn and I usually start with a slip knot. So I'm going to make a slip knot and I'm going to use this and I'm going to cast off stitches with this yarn. So here is the first stitch here and I'm going to just yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two and I usually stop at when I have three loops on the hook, two from the forward pass and one from the return pass. So now at this time, I'm going to just move these back to the forward pass hook, turn this around and continue working with my forward pass yarn, which is the white. So at this point, I also like to close the loop. So I pull on this uh, strand here and I close the loop. So here I am at the beginning, the first stitch that was made in the magic ring. So I'm going to make the second round in starting from here. At this point, I'm going to introduce my stitch markers. So for Tunisian in the round projects, I strongly recommend using stitch markers, especially if you're starting new. Uh, I usually use a stitch marker for every repeat. So there are a total of four markers because we're going to have four repeats here, but I have one marker which is a different color than the others. And that's because I also want to mark what the beginning of the round is. So this marker will mark the beginning of the round and the beginning of the first repeat and the rest of them will be just the beginning of the next repeats. So we start with a knit stitch by making a stitch in between the front and uh, back vertical bars of the first stitch from round one. So here we insert our hook here, yarn over, pull through. That's a knit stitch. And I'm going to put my stitch marker, the blue one here. And then another knit stitch. And then a full stitch which goes in between these two stitches right here so that's the end of one repeat and then now a second repeat which is a knit stitch and i'm going to put my pink stitch marker here because that's the beginning of the second repeat another knit stitch and a full stitch so that completes two repeats and I know that because I have these two markers so at this point it's hard to add any more stitches so I'm going to go back to my return pass hook and I'm going to pick up my return pass yarn. So this is the hardest part of this entire project making the first four rounds. If you're able to get past the first four rounds that get, gets a lot easier. So here return pass yarn over pull through two and I'm going to stop when I have three loops on the hook and then I'm going to go back to my forward pass hook turn the project and now I have two more repeats to go. Knit and full and the fourth repeat that's a knit I'm going to put my stitch marker here another knit and a full 
So this also shows me that I have stopped at the right place. I've completed round two at the right place because this was the first stitch of this round and I've stopped right before that. So if you have a stitch here or if you're going past this one, that means that you've made a mistake. So I'm going to go back to my return pass hook now, turn this around and yarn over, pull through two until I have three loops on the hook. I'm stopping here, going back to the forward pass hook. And now we're going to begin round three. Round three is where we start creating the corner stitches, the C2 and C1 combination stitches. And this is the part which uh, is usually the hardest. So here, begin with a twisted Tunisian simple stitch. So you insert your hook in the opposite direction and then yarn over, pull through. And then you make a twisted knit stitch in the same space. So this is already twisted. So I'm just going to go in between the front and back vertical bars here and yarn over, pull through. So this is, these two stitches are made in the same spot. So this is essentially an increase. So the next is a knit stitch. And then the next is a C1 combination, which is a knit stitch and a simple stitch in the same stitch. So that added five stitches here. And this one was the first one that marks the beginning of this repeat. And the next one is, again, I'm going to do one more. So it's a twisted simple stitch, a twisted knit stitch in the same spot. Make sure that you're not splitting your yarn. And here, this one is the first stitch of this repeat. And then a knit stitch. And then a knit and simple in the same stitch. So this are, these are two repeats of round three and uh, I'm going to make the return pass and then I'm going to complete this round by making two more repeats so that I can show you how to make round four. Here I am at the end of round three. I've made a total of four repeats of round three and now I'm going to begin round four. So round four starts with a C2 combination again. So here you can see that it's not quite a square, but you can start to see the beginnings of a square now that we've started to create these corner stitches. So it's the uh, repeat, it's the increases that create that, that square shape. So I'm going to start with a twisted Tunisian simple stitch, and that's the beginning. And then I'm going to make a twisted Tunisian knit stitch. And then it's a knit stitch and then a reverse stitch. And then another knit stitch before we make the other corner. That's the C1 combination. So that's a knit and a simple in the same spot. So that's a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches in one edge. So this is one edge of the square at this point. And uh, the rest of this can be made the same way, uh, round four. So I'm going to complete round four and show you. I'm going to add a total of three more repeats and complete the return pass and show you how it looks at the end of round four. Here we are at the end of round four and we can see a tiny square build up here. And you can see these corner stitches are lining up beautifully. We're now going to make round five. This is the last round that I'm going to show you because um, it's uh, the, the rest of the rounds are just the same. Just wanted to show you how to read a chart. So I'm going to make uh, the first repeat of round five, which also starts with a C2 combination. So that's a twisted Tunisian simple stitch. And that's the beginning of the round. And a... Tunisian, twisted Tunisian knit stitch. And then 
a knit stitch and three reverse stitches one two three a knit stitch and a c1 combination which is a knit and simple in the same spot so this is the first edge for uh, the round five for the first edge and that's how it's looking so you can see that these reverse stitches are showing up uh, are showing the return pass yarn at the front and that's what actually helps in building these designs so i'm going to go ahead and complete this round and show you how it looks this is how it's looking at the end of round five Now you can make the uh, following rounds exactly the same way. The chart is, um, the every for every round you follow the chart and you'd make four repeats of every round and you'd get a square like this, which, would, uh, which will expand. So I'm going to make uh, until round nine and then show you how to make the bind of round. Here we are at the end of round nine. So we can see the beautiful di uh, diamonds here. And you can see that one quadrant here, this is what was represented in the chart. So if you repeat it a total of four times, you make it a total of four times, then this is what you get. Now I'm going to show you how to make the 10th round, which is the bind of rounds. You need to go ahead and complete your return pass for this by casting off all loops so until I have like one loop on the hook and now I'm going to go back to my forward pass hook now we don't need the cord at all we can just uh, remove it and I'm going to continue making the return uh, the bind of round with this yarn so here we start with just like the previous rounds we start with the c2 combination stitch and now i'm going to remove the stitch marker i'm not going to add it back because uh, this is the last round here so start with a twisted tunisian simple stitch and then slip stitch and then a twisted tunisian knit stitch and slip and then the entire bind off is done with reverse stitches in the chart but you can choose whatever stitch you want but i'm going to follow the chart and make the return uh, the bind off round with reverse stitches so for the next one i'm going to make a reverse stitch and slip reverse stitch and slip and now i'm here so i'm going to make a knit stitch and a simple stitch in the same stitch and slip so i'm not adding any loops on the hook i'm i always have one loop on the hook and the reverse stitch bind off helps with curling because it's a non-curling stitch you can see that these edges are curling quite a bit i'm going to complete this and show you how it looks at the end Here's how it looks at the end of the bind off round. I've completed the entire round. At this point, I'd cut the yarn and uh, join here with the first stitch here, first slip stitch here with a an invisible join. Uh, I'm not going to do that in this video, but that's what I do and complete this. So uh, if you are able to make this, you will be able to make any flat project in the round it's really very simple if you get past the first four or five rounds and this specific technique where you just use knit and reverse stitches to create these designs it can be used to create some very very beautiful patterns so uh, that's pretty much all there is to reading a chart and creating your first swatch